All right, I'm just gonna quickly go over something that I mentioned in the last video I did about the feasts. Um, but it's just, like I only actually noticed it when I was doing the video. And uh, you know, since then I've been dwelling on it and uh, talking about it with my wife and my brothers. Um, and it's just, it's incredible, you know, because it is so obvious throughout all scripture that these people doing the feasts are not listening to the full instruction of God. Uh, because if they were, they would know not to profane God's holy days. Uh, but this is just another example of, <clears throat> you know, uh, God emphasizing this point that to listen to his full instruction and to obey his voice is what he desires over anything else over sacrifices, over burnt offerings, over these feasts. Like, I want to do these feasts when the time is right. And that time is in the kingdom, in the millennial reign. That's when he's going to restore them. But for right now, you know, we're in lamentation, mourning and woe. Um, you know, me and the, and the brothers and the sisters, we've been receiving the meat on the Beatitudes. And it's just incredible. It's all written to the servants. Okay, and the servants, the true servants, are not doing these holy feast days. You know, they're not profaning them. They're waiting. They're waiting on the Lord for him to restore them. Okay, now we're going to go to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 15. I'm just going to read a uh, majority of the chapter here. Um, <coughs> and uh, just, you know, we're going to focus on a few verses when we get there. Okay, so from verse 1, Samuel said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Hearken unto the voice of the words of the Lord. You know, you have to listen to his voice. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up out of Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. And Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in Talaim, 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to a city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. And Saul said unto the Kenites, Go depart you. Get you down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For you showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from amongst the Amalekites. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah until thou camest to, to Shur, that is, over against e Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and the oxen and the fatlings and the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vile and refuse, they utterly destroyed. Then the word of the Lord came unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he has turned back from following me and hath not performed my commandments. It grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place and is gone about and passed on and gone down to Gilgal. And, Sa and Samuel said to Saul, and Saul unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Okay, I hope you're picking up on this. We'll go back over it, but it's so clear. And Samuel said, What meaneth then this bleating of sheep in my ears, and the lowing of oxen which I hear? And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord God. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. And Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell you what the Lord hath said to me this night. And he said unto, and he said unto him, Stay on, oh, sorry, say on. And Samuel said, What when thou wast little in thine own sight, wast thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. 
And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then did you not obey the voice of the Lord, but did fly upon the spoil, and did evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, and the chief of things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. All right. Now I'm going to pause there. <coughs> you know, it's very obvious, but I will just run through it. Saul is king over Israel. God gives him some very clear instructions. Go into the Amalekites, destroy everything. You know, don't leave anything behind. Destroy everything. Samuel, uh, Saul says, okay. Then he goes into the Amalekites and he doesn't listen. He does what is right in his own eyes. And now later on, he says, well, it wasn't me. It was the people. Okay. Now the people who are uh, leading the Torah movement, you know, blind leading the blind, you know, your Adam from Parable of the Vineyard, your Nick Vanderlands, your Now You See TV guys, okay? All these people who are big in the Torah movement. And even if you have a smaller congregation, you know, uh, like um, the Almond House, which is a UK-based one. You know, I spoke to Jack from that place. Jack, if you by any chance watch this video, you're leading your congregation in the, great in the Great Tribulation, okay? Now, the reason why these people say that, oh, well, it's, the, sorry, the reason why Saul said it was the people was because he didn't want to be persecuted for righteousness sake. He didn't want to go against the people because he feared the people more than God. But God says, to obey my voice is better than these sacrifices, okay? Now, look at what Saul even says. I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone the way which the Lord sent me. Okay, these people who are doing the feasts, they think or they at least claim that they are obeying God. But they're clearly not because they're not listening to his full instruction, just like Saul did. Okay, and then he even says, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Okay, now, in Hosea 8, 11 through to 14, it says that because Ephraim has made many altars to sin, altars will be unto him to sin. I have written unto them the great things of my law, but they have counted them a strange thing. They sacrifice sacrifices of flesh and eat it, you know, of my offerings, of my sacrifices, but I will not accept them. And that is exactly what the, it's talking about the feasts. Okay. Now, because what, what the first part means, because Ephraim have made many altars to sin, altars will be unto him to sin. The people who have left the Christian church and who have joined themselves to the Torah movement, you know, or not even necessarily they've gone from the Christian church, just anyone in the Torah movement, they do these feasts because they have covetousness in their heart. You are not listening to the full instruction of God because if you were, you would understand that to do them now is profaning God's feasts, profaning what God calls holy, and that there is a time to do these feasts, but it is not now. Because you made many altars to sin, but you've repented from those, but you never actually repented of the covetousness. Because you have feigned this repentance, you never got rid of the covetousness. And because of that, God then just, you know, he gives you up to do, to profane his feasts because you won't listen to his voice. 
And it's exactly what this is talking about. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. What else is witchcraft? Christmas. Okay, so all the people who are profaning God's feasts, you are no different to the Christians who are doing Christmas. Stubbornness. You won't listen to the correction of the servants. You won't listen to the full instruction. Stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. It's the same as Christmas. Doing these feasts, profaning these feasts, is the same as Christmas. And because you do that, because you have rejected the word of the Lord, God will reject thee from being king. Now, yes, this is specifically talking to Saul here, but you've got to look at the spiritual deeper meaning. The servants, if they overcome, will receive a crown of righteousness. Now, all of these people who are doing the feasts, they have obviously been called to serve because the people, especially the people who have come out of the Christian church and they've gone to the Torah movement, God called you to come out of that apostate church and to start obeying his covenants. And more specifically, to go and teach others to do so, to become the unjust steward, to become a watchman and to go and warn the people. But instead, you feed your own belly doing these feasts. What? Like, it's not a time to feast and rejoice. It says in Jeremiah 31 that when God brings the new, uh, when he brings the new covenant in the millennial reign, then we adorn ourselves with tabrets and pipes. And we go forth with singing and dancing and making merry. That's when we feast. This is when he restores the feasts. Right now we're in lamentation, mourning and woe. We are so close to the end. And it boils my blood to think that there is people who are about to start setting up themselves to do the Passover. What are you doing? The world's about to end. And there's 2.8 billion Christians who have never heard the true gospel before. And you're out there feeding your own bellies with these feasts. Go and warn them. Go and find your lost brothers and sisters. How selfish are you? And because you do this, because you have rejected the calling to be a servant, you will not receive your crown of righteousness. Let no man take your crown. Because you rejected the calling, he's going to give the calling to someone else. And because you wouldn't go and find his lost sheep, he's going to require their punishment at your hand. And you're going to go into great tribulation. So anyone doing these feasts, profaning them, go and watch the video. My last video that I did, Stop Profaning God's Holy Feasts. I run through all the scriptures that show, well, not all of them, but a good majority of them that show you that doing them now is profaning God's feasts, what he thinks of them, the prophecies of them, the clear instruction in Deuteronomy about how to do the feasts and where to do them. You know, but this is it. I'm just emphasizing the point that if you do these feasts, you are not going to receive your crown of righteousness. You are committing witchcraft and iniquity and idolatry. Okay, take this seriously.